Hey guys, so um, welcome to another episode of Radical Character Reviews uh, from the Break Room Blitz, guys. So, um, <clears throat> alright. Well, uh, today I did a couple things different. Um, one, you get to see me now. Uh, two, uh, I, did, uh, I did the preliminary sketch and I actually had you guys watch me do it just on a fast track. Um, so I wanted you to see, you know, kind of what I did and I'll go through the thought process when I was, as I was going through it. And uh, I changed a couple things, but um, yeah. Um, so today, as you can tell, we are going over Gene Wilder as a character, as a human being. Um, very influential growing up. Uh, he was in Willy Wonka, Blazing Saddles, The Producers, and, and uh, you know, those, a lot of the, those are a lot of his key films. Um, but, uh, I mean, there's plenty more, obviously. But um, overall, uh, I just wanted to touch base on Gene Wilder since he's passed on um, how an amazing actor he was. A couple little key key points here. Um, he was in a lot of Mel Brooks films, and uh, it turns out that um, when Mel Brooks first met him, he, he told him, I'm going to make you uh, a key character in one of my movies. My movie, that he says, if we get the funding, I'm coming for you. And Gene didn't really believe him. <clears throat> and uh, not too long after he got, uh, Mel Brooks got the, the money for producers to, to actually do it, um, he showed up to Gene's um, dressing room and, and tossed him the script and said, "Start reading, because guess what? You're you're in the movie." And uh, Gene just started crying, and I was just like, "That's kind of cool." Like, uh, you know, Mel Brooks is a man of his word, um, and and Gene was just delighted to be a part of that, and he gave a, a brilliant performance in that. Um, you know, it's an old school movie. Some people watch it nowadays and be like, "Eh," but um, I, I still enjoy watching that from time to time. Um, the reason why I ended up choosing Willy Wonka was just because it is probably one of the most iconic um, characters he's done. Uh, it's definitely one of the most unpredictable, and I, I really enjoyed what he brought to the ideas of Mr. Wonka. Uh, key fact in this one here too, a little, you know, no or not no. Um, the scene where he walks out for the first time, and he's using the cane, and he's like, you know, squabbling. Uh, <clears throat> it turns out that he he wanted to do that, and that was the only way that he would do the part. Is that they let him do that without any preliminary knowledge of anyone knowing what he was going to do, and um, just the way he did it, uh, it the like it, the the reaction was legitimate, and so I thought that was pretty awesome. Like the fact that you know an actor improved and said, "This is how I'm going to do it," to give the introduction the right way, and the reactions were just real. Um, so I just, I really appreciated that and what he brought to the role and the, the mix of psychotic and creativity and artist and, and just oddball person. Um, and, uh, so in this sketch today, I wanted to draw him and I, you know, another reason why I did Blaine Wonka is because I just wanted an excuse to draw an Oompa Loompa. Um, <clears throat> so... All right, so I have my, my rough sketch here. I'm going to go ranking. I'm going to go ahead and, and talk about um, a little bit of the process that I did. You, you saw what I went through, and, um, you know, it feels fast-paced, but typically I block out with big shapes, and I go in, and now we're going to do some inking on it. But, um, yeah, so I, I started out with some basic shapes on this. Um, you know, when I did the head, I started off with a bigger circle, and I broke into the face a little bit, and it kind of looks like Gene Wilder, a little, a little animated version. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Uh, you know, going into the character himself, uh, when you first meet Mr. Wonka, like I've described, uh, you end up, you know, kind of meeting this really kind of clumsy old man. I guess not old man, but just when you meet him, people like look at him like, what's wrong with him? You know, is he ill? Like, he can't walk? He has to use a cane? And you think that the king of chocolate, you know, is going to be this very, you know, Hunky dory happy person, and uh, so you don't get this sense of you're not excited to meet him. Like you're just like, wow, he's he's old, he's he's on a cane, he's probably hurting. You know, he might be grumpy, and um, it just it's an interesting take on the first reveal of uh, Mr. Wonka. But then the unpredictability comes in, and he 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 does this fall, flip, and jump, and ta da. And I, I thought that was, you know, I'm looking, I'm watching the movie back in the day going like, that's Mr. Wonka. And, um, yeah, so it was really cool to get that feel off the character from the get-go. Uh, 
you know, one thing in this drawing is I wanted to draw the crazy hair. Like that's, I, I did pull up some references. Obviously, I always, I always do that when I draw, and I try to pull up more realistic references. And I even just pull up some older traditional photos of him, um, just because I wanted to. Um, I want. I, I'm sorry. I pulled up one image of another artist's um, version of him, and it's very, very exaggerated. It's amazing. Um, but I think it's by uh, uh, Rico. It's, it's, it's an artist named Rico. And um, <clears throat> it's just a really fun, exaggerated picture of him holding a gobstopper with the crazy eyes. And um, there's a picture I found where he has these really crazy, like, eyes, and he's, like, holding the gobstopper, like, only one! And um, it's, it, yeah, I just, I like how he goes from this subtle look to a very, like, crazy, like, Rrr. so... I was gonna to try to do the crazy eyes, but I was like, I want to go with a more traditional Gene Wilder, and so I did. I just, I just went with the general, general Gene, and um, yeah. So uh, one other other thing I like about this character is uh, he's very particular. You can tell that he likes things a certain way, but it, it's random. It's it's weird to explain. He he does him constantly through this movie he's always mr wonka um there's never an instance where he he changes for another person i guess so to, you know he during the movie he's he is this he's as random as his ingredients to create and you know that that scene where he's <laughs> um he tosses a boot in in the the, the boiling pot um, he's like, what's that for, Mr. Wonka? And he's like, just to give it a little kick. And I thought that was funny. Like, I'm sitting there going, like, this guy is crazy, but I like him. And um, it's definitely a fun a fun way to view a character. Um, and it, it doesn't make sense. I think that's the one thing I really enjoyed, too, is this movie did not have to make sense um, as far as, you know, what went into it. And um, in the sense of how he creates you know nowadays i feel like if you watch a movie like this you're gonna be like well that doesn't make any sense that's stupid and I, I feel that you know we've lost that concept of just going to a movie and enjoying the fact that it's just random unpredictable and, and just in a sense not not stupid but just like it didn't have to make sense it was just fun and, and I really enjoyed that era of film because it was it was so imaginative. And, you know, now we're in this era where everything has to, because we can make everything look real, that's what we do. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I definitely miss the old, old uh, imaginative creativity from Hollywood, but I, I guess you can't really come up with much of that, that nowadays. Um, let's see here. I'm going to fill in the eye here. So typically when I, when I do ink work, um, you know, I, I kind of always go back to, uh, oh, was it, um, I wasn't thinking it was Chasing Amy. Um, yeah, it was, I think it was Chasing Amy where he's like, you're, so you're an inker, not an inker. Um, but, uh, yeah, from, uh, Kevin Smith films and, uh, you know, he's a, it's, it's funny. Um, uh, but I, I definitely, inking is a fun part for me because you can kind of see the character come to life a little bit and you can you can start getting a little more clear vision of, of your, your sketch. Um, and then you can actually fill in some blanks. Um, so, uh, yeah, you could, obviously this doesn't look too much like Gene. Um, but uh, if I were doing more of a realistic drawing, I'd probably go into a lot more depth, but I, this video would be like 10 times longer. So, uh I love this hat too. This hat's the thickness there. Um, now I want to talk about some Jean, some of Jean's other characters. So um, we've uh, we've seen Blazing Saddles, uh, and in Blazing Saddles he plays the Waco Kid, and he, it's he's such a relaxed character. You know, when you meet him, he's in a jail cell, and <laughs> that part where he's like, "So what do you like to do for fun?" And he's like, "Drink." Screw, uh, play chess. Screw, and um, the actor's like, "Well, let's play chess." <laughs> so it's just, I mean, that's your introduction to this character, and you can tell he's a, he's a, he's not broken. Like it's really weird because the character is not necessarily broken. He's just comfortable where he's at, and uh, you know, he's such a great supportive character, and. 
during the course of the movie, just the ideas and, and how he acts as just this relaxed, you know, fella. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, but uh, Blazing Saddles is definitely a fun movie, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, Mongo. Mongo. I, I feel like a shirt needs to be made, you know. You know, Mongo like flowers or something like that. Something silly. But uh, I like his bow tie here too, and it looks like he's got like a ruffles here. So it's like, well, not ruffles, but like these really big outward type of uh, you know ties here. So I'm gonna kind of put them behind one each other. So breaking into a sketch within a sketch. Um, let's see here. Now Gene too. Um, it was overall like an amazing man. He, you know, he he was suffering from a lot as he he had gotten older, and um, it, it was it was sad to see because he was such uh, a fun-loving man overall, and uh, he just loved loved entertaining. And you know, I, I really wish that we would have gotten a little bit more, a couple more Mel Brooks movies out, but I don't think that they would have fit in today's world. It's like you know, I, I've seen a lot of film where uh, we try to bring back some of those old movies, you know, like when they try to bring back Dumb and Dumber and recently they try to bring back Ghostbusters and, you know, it, it turned into not a blunder, it's just, it wasn't necessarily needed um, and, you know, I, I really wish that uh, they would have tried to be a bit more innovative um, but uh, as I'm glad they're not making any more Willy Wonkas <laughs> um you can I, I will the Johnny Depp one wasn't horrible um, it wasn't my favorite movie in the world but uh, Johnny Depp always brings a really fun character out but uh, there's a consistency with them and um, you know he's very good about doing uh, bringing interesting takes to characters but uh, yeah you can't beat Gene on this one uh, Gene uh, like one of my favorite scenes in the movie too was when he uh, he's he's on the the boat and they're going through the chocolate and you know he starts you know singing no prediction where we're going going um, and you know he, he gets slower and then he, he breaks out and he's all like, screaming and it's just interesting because what would you do if you were on a boat with a man who just started doing that to you like oh my gosh like. This guy's crazy, and um, he, you know we're on a boat with him, and he's taking us somewhere. Where is he? He's gonna throw us in a pot, and he's gonna cook us and make us some chocolate. And it turns out he did. He, he made a couple people well, not, not chocolate, but he you know Augustus glue got sucked in, and you know he, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, Violet. Oh my gosh! I've got a blueberry for a daughter. That was funny. I'll never get over that. I, I think that's the other thing too about that movie is it shows you, um, I hate to say it, but some of the mentality of how parents bring up their kids and you're like, wow, like this kid's screwed. <laughs> um, and, and it's just interesting because it's like the movie also had a very, very amazing message to send in, in the sense of, you know, like, there, yeah, well, I guess it did varies because I mean Charlie was was in the poor, Veruca was all rich, and all these other kids were not necessarily rich, but they were in just good seats. And and Charlie was then and they ended up wanting to be getting the chocolate factory because he was honest, you know. And, and uh, I think the thing is too, the thing that kind of gets me is I don't know if Charlie, um, you, you know, it's it's amazing to see, well, curious to see whether or not he had the mansion. I almost want to see if uh, they would make a movie about what happened afterwards, you know, while well, Charlie ran the factory, and you know maybe. Have some more fun with that. Um, not to mention, I, I want to see more Oompa Loompa dances and Oompa Loompa songs. And uh, I, I really like this movie for the Oompa Loompas because everyone was different. And you know, it was like uh, when they first came out Wizard of Oz. Um, you had all the different Munchkins from Munchkinland, and uh, you know, it's so different. And now in modern cinema, we we do a lot of um, just replication. So they used one guy for this, but all the, the for the new for the new Willy Wonka. They used one guy for it, but they did do some clever things as far as um, placement and having them go around and do the dance replicated several times. And um, there's still something to appreciate from it. So I'll never depreciate cinema when they try to do stuff because I definitely have a lot of friends that work in it. And uh, it's definitely not an easy field to, to be in. Um, there's a lot of rush times. There's a lot of pressure on artists and 
you know, deadlines and over time and it takes you away from your family and, you know, some, I guess where I'm getting at with that is work nowadays takes you away from family time a lot. And, um, you know, I, I remember sitting down on my couch watching this with my family and you don't see many people doing that anymore. Um, you go to the theater or something like that, but it's not like, it's not, you'd see them sitting down in the living room, but then they're all looking at their phones. So it's, it's, you know what they, you know, here's a million dollar idea. You got to give the power to a parent to have some type of kill switch on all the phones. So when they press a button, no internet access, no phone calls, no text messages, like done. Like maybe they can select like three people they can get text messages from or something, but clear, you can't get it, nothing. And um, I would totally be down for something like that, especially when I become a parent. Um, but uh, I would definitely, you know, I, I like I said, th this was a family moment for me, you know, when I would sit down with this and watch it with my brother and, you know, if my mom was there and she wasn't too busy working, uh, sometimes, you know, even back in the day, it's kind of the same thing. Here's the Oompa Loompa. I like their hair. Ooh. Get the curve in there. Um, I should do, someone should be an Oompa Loompa for Halloween. I've never seen one. I've seen pictures of one but I'd definitely like to see one. Uh, all right, now I know this is a character review. It should be focusing more on Gene, but I, I break off into tensions, guys. Who doesn't do that? Uh, so uh, at the end, I will say for Mr. Wonka, uh, it was kind of awesome how you kind of get the double take, the, the, the random ending, the, the twist, twist on the end, where um, you know he gives Charlie one last test. And it, it's almost like so... This whole time it wasn't a test. It was, you know, maybe you're just showing them the factory. Um, and, you know, originally you think Charlie failed that test and he didn't, you know, the last test was, can you give, uh, you know, the bad guy, uh, Slugworth, the everlasting gobstopper. And he didn't. And uh, it shows the honesty in a person and it shows the integrity that Charlie had because he knows that you know, when it came down to money, money wasn't important. Family was important. And, um, you know, the fact that he was with his grandpa and, and Mr. Wonka gave him, gave him the everlasting gobstopper. And Charlie didn't have to do that. He could have, with, with how he was treated by Mr. Wonka, he could have been like, you know what, screw you, dude. Like, no. And um, I, I really like, in the end, how uh, that, that reverted on him. Like, you know, he, he knew that that wasn't the case. He says, I'm not going to be this person. And you have the choice to be that person. And I think that's the brilliance of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is you have a choice to be who you want to be. And, um, you know, the support's there. Grandpa Joe was amazing in that movie. And, and Mr. Wonka pushed people to a limit. And, um, you know, when <laughs> the kids got, uh, you know, what they deserved in a sense, you know, uh, it was... He, he, he didn't necessarily have remorse for him. I, I think more or less he had pity for him. Uh, and he didn't really, like, I don't want to say necessarily cared. Like, I feel like he did care. I feel like everybody cares even when they don't project that. Uh, but it was just interesting to watch um, how when every kid would get taken, he, he was more irritated. Um, he seemed more irritated, less concerned, and the parents are panicking, they're in a panic frenzy. And it was, um, you know, you're thinking like, dude, like, nowadays, if something like that were to happen, you'd like get sued 10 ways to nothing. And, uh, you know, that's the modern world we live in, you know, something bad happens, I'm suing you. And, uh, yeah, so, but, uh, I, I think more or less because he knew that everything was gonna be okay. And I'm wondering if at the end he knew Charlie was going to do what he was going to do, or if maybe he was irritated with the fact that Charlie didn't, you know, at first. And it, it just says a lot about the character. He was willing to take that gamble. He was unpredictable. He was, he was not necessarily a psycho. He was just creative, and the creative mind has these outbursts and, and wants to challenge people and wants to see the effect that um, certain things have on them. You know, when you induce fear, when you induce laughter, all those feelings come out. And, you know, I think that's when people are the most real is when you, you induce some type of emotional response because um, 
you know, when people are angry or sad or, or, you know, you start to see them for who they are, you know, and it's the self that they hide from themselves. And it's like Wilt Wonka wanted the person who was going to give the best reactions in a sense, you know, those who were going to be, in a sense, excited or are intrigued by it. He wants that person to run his Wonka shop. And uh, I really enjoyed that because Charlie, you know, was excited. He was curious. And that curiosity serves a purpose because whereas to most would uh, show their inner character of what they wanted, you know, Veruca wanted a golden goose. Gooses, geeses. Augustus wanted to be a freaking slob. And, you know, the, the, the little kid, um, Mike TV, you know, he just wanted to be on TV and he wanted to be a superstar. He wanted to be a cowboy. And, you know, there's no regard to a hierarchy of people. And Charlie was all about people. And, you know, that's actually something, you know, not to be on a preview side here, that's that's what matters most in life is, you know, you can literally lose everything, but the people you have in your life are definitely an amazing, amazing thing. Something I've learned very recently for myself as well, you know. Uh, you learn it every day, and I definitely think that appreciating those people helps. And, and the fact that Charlie was like that, the fact that Mr. Wonka brought that out in people, in, in Charlie himself through this movie, um, it, it shows a lot. It definitely, it teaches you. If you really watch this movie on a sense of taking in the message, um, outside of just having fun with it, uh, it, it has a lot to say. And it's it's so slightly done where it doesn't come off as preachy. I'm actually coming off more preachy than the movie did. Like, I just look for these things. Um, and uh, Mr. Wonka, as an entire character, I firmly believe he is a master of bringing out the best are the worst in people and sometimes you have to do that um, to find out you know what you have and that's what you're left with because then you get to see start to see people for who, who they really are and um, sometimes it's sad it really is because you, you had hoped for more and it is what it is you know you know you have your answers and uh, it just uh, it, it changes things a lot uh, changes perspectives but it also makes you reflect I think that's the best thing about it is it does make you reflect uh, because it reflects because you do reflect you start to think you know about yourself and how you've acted and, and how you've responded and um, it challenges you as a human being and to me honestly those who don't care to do any of that I, I feel they miss out on life and they miss, miss out off a learning experience of uh, growing and I you know that's why I honestly feel that um, Gene Wilder if you kind of follow his track record in film and the producers, he was very over expression. Like he was like so over the top, but it wasn't horrible. You know, when he would get affected in, in one of the initial scene, you know, he's like screaming and almost crying. And um, it, it was interesting. And then you see as he, his track record as it goes on and you see the difference in variation, but you still see that hint of who he was in the first film and how he uses that exaggeration and that creative creative noggin of his to make these characters that are so fun um the waco kid was by far probably one of the most uh least uh crazy characters but he was a lot of fun too i, I like that character a lot just because of how laid back he was um and back to mr wonka here uh you know you start to see a very soft and sentimental side of him at the end of the movie at the end of the movie you start to see how he is very caring, very nurturing, and how he was just, you know, he opens up the gates and, and he, he lets Charlie know, I was just looking for someone who would, you know, live in hope and love like I do with this, this the, the chocolate factory, bring bring light to people's lives. You know, you realize that's what he's about. And, um, you know, the tactic he used to, to, you know, scare it out of people, you know, bring out that, that uh, their true self you know, he definitely got what he wanted out of it, and Charlie he felt most comfortable with. And um, uh, it would be interesting, like I said, to see a movie where it's the after effect. You know, what happens after the chapter, you know, Charlie and, uh, you know, the factory afterward or something. I don't know, something silly. But I would also be afraid of that movie coming out because, one, we don't have Gene Wilder. Um, I don't know where the actor that played Charlie is right now. And Grandpa Joe is definitely not here anymore. And I would want to see Grandpa Joe, and I want to see some of the original cast back. So it's not, it's, not, it's like seeing the, wanting to see the Goonies again, and we're not going to get it. But instead we got Stranger Things, which is a lot of fun. I don't know if you watch Stranger Things, but Stranger Things is amazing. And, 
So I'm almost done here with uh, Mr. Wonka. I'm going in with just some light shading and just some, some you know, some editing in here. But, uh, yeah, and then uh, I, I will eventually go into color with these guys. Actually, I have a plan in the future, um, just to kind of give you guys a heads up. Um, I eventually will either want to take these guys in Photoshop or fully color these guys. And I'll full color it uh, on the original copy, and then I'll do a Photoshop version of it. And eventually, Breakroom Blitz hopes to you know get a website going and uh some of these guys will be available for prints so tossing that your way if you guys want to help us out and, and get us out there a little bit more we definitely enjoy doing this and we uh we would love any type of feedback and um especially on this like i this is the very first drawing tutorials i've ever done in my life and i've been more cautious and scared to do them more or less just because you're really putting yourself out there but I've reached a point in my life that, um, you know, you can spend the rest of your life being afraid of the things uh, that uh, limit you, you set in your own limitations. Being afraid of these things really stops you from enjoying and living life and put challenging yourself. And so uh, this is a huge challenge for me and I'm really glad that I've taken it upon myself to actually go through and do it. And uh, I strongly suggest that as you guys watch this and, you know, you guys see other characters, look at the characters and learn from them because that's what I do on a constant basis. I'm constantly learning from these characters. If there's one thing I can take from Gene's character is um, the attempt to bring out uh, a, a someone's true nature. Um, and, and simply because people are very unpredictable and sometimes you just don't know. So... Uh, in this movie, um, Mr. Wonka is definitely someone that challenges you to to show yourself. And, um, you know, you learn about these people and sometimes you're just shaking your head being like, oh my gosh. Anyways, I'm not going to go into a long, long haul on this. Uh, so, <clears throat> I hope you had fun watching this video. I hope you had fun seeing me for the first time. I hope you like my chewy shirt. Um, got some music going in the background, but... There's the character review. We did Gene Wilder and some of his many faces. And if you haven't watched some of those movies, Mel Brooks is an amazing, amazing writer-director. And um, I strongly suggest, uh, you know, watching these things. Uh, especially Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein is probably be Halloween's coming around the corner. Um, you know, if I can give you some of my list here, um, I would definitely watch um, Young Frankenstein. Uh, if you want to go into the old slashers, go into Jason, Friday the 13th, some, some Nightmare on Elm Streets. Um, oh, you, you can't go without Hocus Pocus this um, this Halloween. You have to do Hocus Pocus. Um, and if you really want to go crazy and go, um, you know, back in uh, Exorcist, you know, that that still that still gets me today a little bit because it's just... And get the, get the extended one where, like, they had the extra stuff in there. It's pretty freaky. But... That's it, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching the video. Um, send me some feedback on these these sketches. I, I definitely want to, you know, bring some new elements to it and make you guys enjoy them more. And uh, eventually, I will get to a point where I'm no longer nervous. Uh, so that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, sketch of Gene Wilder. Um, look for the next one. And take care, guys. Break Room Blitz. Christopher's Radical Character Reviews. Take care.